Good evening. Good evening. I am Shell from the Chikani species. Welcome. You know of Bashar? Yes, of course. I am a colleague. Wonderful, thank you for coming through. We invited a specialist in the contact. Are you responding to this invitation? Partially. Wonderful, thank you. My main concern, I do have a message before we do start. There has been much fluctuation in the emotional levels of humans as of late. They go up and down much, very quickly. There, it is an attack on your logical systems, shall we see. There is one way to combat it, and that is with the logic that you do perceive in yourselves. You realize that you shouldn't be down, depressed, feeling angry. You should not want to feel this way, and yet, it is hard to move out of it. Now, you've been given several different ways to move up in your vibrations, meditations with intense, checking out your highest vibrations within yourselves, highest resonances, checking out uh, thankfulness, goodness, bringing down good thoughts upon yourself by saying thank you for everything before you get out of bed in the morning. But, as the day progresses, these things get lost. Why do they get lost? Because it's an attack. It's an attack on your goodness, your, your vibration, and how do you defeat that? How do you defeat that? You have to think rationally and logically. That is how you defeat it. Because if, if you realize in yourself, if you say in yourself, I should not be this way. Why am I this way? There is nothing here logically that I should be angry about, frustrated about, but yet here I am, logic, illogically frustrated, angry, Disappointed, whatever the emotion may be that's bringing you down, you must be aware of where it's coming from. It is not coming from anything around you that is logical. Do you understand this? There are some days when you get down, there's no logical reason. No absolute logical possible reason you should be up that day because certain good things are happening. Oh, yes. It will bring you to those things that are negative in your thought pattern. You will think, oh, that's why I'm feeling bad. But it is an afterthought. Your, your thoughts are being controlled. And logically, you should be able to say, I shouldn't be feeling that way. I should not be depressed. I should not be frustrated. I should not be illogically down today. So you must... Grab a hold of your logic, start your thankfulness, start your understanding, do a meditation. I know some of you are at work, some of you are doing things that are important, some of you are doing friendship things and, and are sitting at a table saying, oh, I feel so horrible today. But you can stop and logically recalculate what is happening to you. Because I am telling you now, there is no reason for some of you to feel be feeling these things. And it brings the whole down. Brings the whole down. If someone walks into the room and expresses a negative thought, what does that do? It is like, it just goes like a negative energy through the room, unless you can stop it by bringing yourself up and sending out the positive thought throughout the room and bring that back up. Do you understand? Yes. But yeah. right now we're going through you're going through, not we, but you are going through a number of reptilian, bad reptilian uh, scenarios, shall we say. They're testing out how to control your emotions, how to bring you down, because some of them want your world. And if you continue to rise, they won't get it. You'll be understanding too much for them to get it. Because, what did I tell you? You're at the 
I did not tell you yet, but you are starting your telepathy. Your telepathy. So you are starting to feel the intents of others sometimes when you just walk in the room. Do any of you feel when you walk in the room, you know if it's a good atmosphere or a bad atmosphere? Oh, yes. This is the beginning of telepathy. When you are able to sense these things. Many, many years ago on your planet, people could walk into a room and not sense anything. But now... You go into a room, you feel the energy. That is the activation of your fourth dimensional energy. Yes. And so you will be able to feel that wall of negativity. You'll be able to know if there's a peaceful atmosphere. So they are dealing with you on your emotional level. So that whenever you are in any scenario, you will feel the negative and not the positive. So reevaluate yourselves. So in when you should not, when you know for sure, you should not be feeling negative, reevaluate that in your logical mind because you can beat them by being logical. You can beat them by saying, no, I, I refuse to believe that that is what's happening right now, that I am really frustrated and lost and lonely and I mean, so many emotions they bring up. However, right now, they were, you can change it. That's all you have to do is logically change it. If you're alone, do a, a intended in meditation or start thanking for all the things, the good things that you have. You can do that anywhere you are in the world. You can inside of yourself start thanking God for all the good things that you have. And you know what? It may take five or ten minutes, but it does bring you back. You know why? Because you're hearing yourself. It's hearing yourself. Subconscious. Subconscious is a very powerful thing. Your subconscious, if you believe that it works, it will work. And even if you don't believe it will work, it will still work. Because it is strong. It is strong. And you can bring yourself up through these logical realities. So you do not have to be down, depressed, feeling the lowness of your humanity. You're, oh, I'm a third dimensional being. Oh, perk up. You can change that. You're on your way up. You're on your way up. You're on your way up. Do you understand that? Do not fall for the, the clever deceptions. You're on your way up. Keep it up. Oh, I'm sure that there are days that you are truly down. There are, you are in a third dimension, a third density, but you can bring that back up as well. Yes, there are reasons for everything. There are reasons for people to be down. If you were never down, you would not understand the glory of the joy that you will be experiencing as you move up. So there will be some down days, but do not dwell on them. Do not go back and say, oh, that day was... No, move forward. Move forward. Learn from that moment and move forward you, in your now. That is another thing I want to speak to you about. Live in the now. You cannot... Your future begins now, correct? With every second that is now, that is part of your future. So if you are now feeling wonderful, if you are now feeling great, if you are now feeling exuberant, that is building your future. If you are now feeling horrible and sad and any kind of bad, that is also building some of your future. Now, those people who are sick, that's different. They can pick themselves out of the now and see that future uh, wellness. Do you understand? Yes. They can find their future wellness in the now. And that is part of their future. Yes. So, in order for you to experience the now the way you should, is what is now meaning to you at this minute? Is it learning? Is it understanding? Is it development? Is it just congregating to be a community? Wonderful! It's part of your future now. Now is now and always will be now. But 
your future now starts now. Is there any questions? Uh, I really welcome Chakanyet uh, coming through. We were inviting you for a long time, and it's wonderful that you finally joined us. It's nice well, to open the channel. Well, we have a special channel here with Bashar, and we didn't want to steal his thunder, because he does have a very special communicative way with you, your people. I am here today because I think it was a necessary thing and I have discussed it with my people and I have decided to come because there is much depression on the earth within the enlightened community right now. Within the enlightened community. Perhaps not everyone here, but I see that there was a definite movement down into a little bit more of a third reality density of depression with some of you because what happened there now became very very strong with a down feeling and what does that do that makes the next now just as bad and they're not picking themselves out of it so the now as you know, I don't know how many of you know about what Chakani, how we live, or whatever, but we can envelop ourselves in all of our nows. We, we, can, we can activate all of our nows when we need to. And so, it is just something we can do. You will find someday, if you continue to evolve the way you are evolving now, you will find that your nows can be controlled. It's like saying time is dragging you along. But there is no such thing as time, is there? But when you realize that, then you can take what you call time and make it work for you. It does not have to drag you along. It does not have to be a weight for you. But yet, you can be useful with it. But you will find that out some other day. So, is there any other questions? Yeah. So who are you referring to as they that are dragging us down? I was talking to the negative reptilians. There are some. Putin is being controlled by negative reptilians. Reptilians, your language, is very forthright. So, yes, he is, if you ever looked at his face, have you seen his face lately? Yeah. Do you see how blank it is? How totally blank it is. There's not an emotion in the man anymore. He is being totally controlled. And that is a very dangerous thing. Because he's given that control over. Because he wants the power that they promised him. And they're promising him a lot more than he is going to get. This is some, you're talking about some other race? Yes, it is a species of reptilians that I won't name because it's just not pro appropriate. But they are on the earth and they deal with many of the earth leaders, including the United States. However, the United States is not being led by them, but they do talk to them. They have no choice, really. Um, but Putin has, is in their total control. And he is a dangerous man. And that guy in Korea, um, he is not totally in control by reptilians, he's just mad. But, <laughs> as, but as they, in, are, they are around him. As, exactly. as in anger or mad at as out of his mind? Oh, uh, uh, he's not thinking properly, let's put it that way. His view of reality is very skewed. Very, very skewed. Um, but he thinks of himself as pretty much of a god, so he's, whatever he does is okay. So that's pretty skewed. Even I don't feel that way. <laughs> yes? So how much of it is in our control? It is in your control, much of it. However, you have to believe that. Um, you know what the... the um, what did you, what do you call it? The, you bringing the positive things, the law of attraction, there we go. 
the law of attraction. People, if you would really believe it, you could bring anything you wanted to you. You're positive, you could bring your life to you. That doesn't mean that there won't be sad days and there won't be problems. You know why? Because there's other people around you. You're not living in a vacuum. You are taking on other people's problems as well that are close to you. That anyone that touches your aura, anyone that gets close enough to get in contact with your aura can affect you with their thought processes, etc., etc., etc. So, um, yes, and you don't live in a vacuum, so, but you can control many major things, many, many major things in your life with the law of attraction, with logic that, that the law of attraction works, the truth that it works, the, the very thought that negativity does not have to exist, you let it exist, you let it take control, and you let it be what it is. And the reason why you do that is because you don't know any better. Really, really, you don't know any better. You think that's the way it should be. Um, others live in negative, swirling worlds that, who would want to get near that? However, you have to work with some of these, these negative tornadoes. So you, you have to get close to them, and so you have to protect yourself, really. In, the, in those times, you say, uh-oh, so-and-so is coming. Please cover me with a white light. Don't let them say five, 15 negative things to me. Look, give me an out of some sort so that I can get away because these are the people that will bring you swirling down because if you accept their negative negativity on yourself, you can't help but be in contact with them. But if you bring it on yourself, you will also become a swirling tornado. Maybe not as bad. But with your logic, with your understandings, and with your laws of attraction, you can do much better. Much better. I mean, much better. Do you understand that? It's not easy, and I'll tell you why. Because you do not see the results of it right away. You do not see immediately results. You do not see, oh, Lord, I believe in the law of attraction. It's right here. You know, no, 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 no. What has happened is you have, you have swirled the pot in a negative way already. Do you understand? And, okay, you're slowing that pot down and moving it the other direction. You're stirring the pot toward a positive direction then. And then, when you start feeling some effects of the Law of Attraction, some positive reactions that you know are from the, that things are you asked for, the things that you want for yourself, that are necessary for you to be positive, when you start seeing those things come to pass, then it becomes much easier to let the Law of Attraction work. But if you don't see it work right away, most of you are like, eh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's not true. You have to let it work. You have to give it time to work. You have to let it free yourselves of some of that negative thought processes. You need to intend some of your meditations to be, get rid of some of this negativity that you know is trapped there for many, many years, some of it. Get rid of it. Get it out. Say it out loud. I want to get rid of this. Because then you will be able to deal with it. Okay? But, you can, but it's not going to come like in 30 seconds or in five days or in maybe a month. It may take a little time for this negativity to force itself out so that the positivity can work its way into your pattern. Because it is a pattern. What it, it is, you continue the positive pattern, it will be a cycle of positive patterns, correct? If you have negative and positive, you have a, 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 a which way am I going? Uh, is this a positive loop or is this a negative? Listen to what you say. I, 
I have listened to people on earth say, I am a positive person. I only say positive things. Oh, that girl over there, she is a you-know-what. But... <laughs> oh, no, you're listening. <laughs> but if you say things like that, that is not a positive part of your positive cycle. You're not saying, you're not going, oh, I'm so positive, but then she's so boo. No, that does not work. You must listen. I, I challenge you to put a tape recorder on your body and listen to what you say every day, and you go, listen to at the end of the day, and you'll be going, oh my, did I really say that? Did I really do that? Did I feel that way? Do you understand? Yes. We do not realize what we say, unless we do realize what we say. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You must realize what you say, because that is what's coming around. You could be saying to yourself, I'm very positive. I'm a wonderful, positive person. But she's a swamasama. She, that guy, he can just go fall off the end of the earth. But this is not a positive thing to put into your positive swirl of... Do you understand? Yes. Is there any questions? What's the, what's the goal of this reptilian race on Earth? What are they trying to accomplish? They want slaves. They want, they want your... They don't have a world anymore. They don't have a world that's worth living in anymore. They do have a world, I should say, but it's not worth living in. And they've gone to many other worlds and have tried to do this very same thing and have succeeded and so they're that negative swirl for their what they're attracting is coming to them because they know how to do it but um, in here that's why I want to speak to you about these kind of things others can affect that swirl on the earth people with their negative current don't let them knock out your positive current don't be a part of it you mean there's reptilians that are negative? That oh, are, yes. We can help them also? If you, uh, if you give in to them. No, no, I mean, can we help them? Help them help do them what? Help them to become more positive? We can help them become more positive. However, that's not their goal right now. You okay. can help them one by one to be more positive, but not as a group. Do you understand that? Okay. Right. You may be able to affect one at a time. But they don't make themselves aware to you as much as they do to those of importance. And those of importance would never tell you that they knew a reptilian. Because you would say, out of office right now. Wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. You'd say, aha, right, he's crazy. Out. That is the, the people do not see it yet as they should. They do, they're starting to understand that there are aliens, and there are spirits, and there are many things out there that they don't understand. However, don't talk to them about it because they won't ever tell you that they believe it. They're afraid to believe it, even though they do believe it. They say that they are afraid of it, uh, or that it's just nonsense, because they don't want to think about it. They don't want to make it part of their reality. So. None of your leaders will tell you that they've seen a reptilian or a yigil or any species whatsoever because you would immediately kick them out of office or, or do something. They'd be assassinated probably, I would think. But um, I, I lost my train of thought. But anyway, you, the, the reptilians are here to take your uh, resources because they have none. They have none. They're running out of what they have. And they're clever enough to use other leaders to get what they need from a planet. They do not have to attack it and control it because the people would be scared and people would die. And they don't want that. They're, they're too smart for a mass attack. And that, it's messy. It's, it's, you don't get everyone. You know, it's, it always fails for them because... Why? Because they're very stubborn and they don't listen to anybody except themselves and that's their downfall. So they use others. They use others to do their biddings. And this is much smarter. 
for them. It's like, eh, we don't have to do get our hands real dirty because you're going to do it for us. Do they physically appear to leaders like Vladimir Putin? Yes, they do. Like Interesting kind of, kind enough. Of earthly physical form? They, they make themselves look as good as possible. But for a reptilian, that's difficult. But they can look pretty good, not too bad. Um, they still are ugly. But in your eyes, I wouldn't say that they're extremely ugly when they take on some boards, but um, they are definitely talking to the leaders. And, they, and the leaders know they are reptilians. They let that be known. And they can prove it. How do they prove it? Um, it's not hard. They'll take, they'll take their other form for a few seconds, and, and it's very convincing. So do they have a, the same biology we do, but maybe a reptilian-shaped head? Um, it's about, DNA-wise, it's in the 90 percentile range. But you, you realize that most of the creatures on our planet are within the 90 percent, <laughs> in the 90 percentile range. Um, isn't that true, Max? You said our planet, meaning the Earth. Your planet, yes. Thank you. But it's not our planet, but it's your planet. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, our planet, is, percent, yeah. our planet is the same way. That's why I was thinking that way. Because everything's in the 90-some percentiles, no matter what the creature is. It's 90-some it's percent the same DNA. So, our planet, your planet, makes a difference. Okay, would some of, the, some of those that we know of as men in black yes. be part of that? Men in Black are a special organization. They, they are connected to the Illuminati and so to the other one. What is that one called? The Cabal? Yes, they're connected oh, there yeah. as well. But they're a special section of it that does not run from that leadership. But yet they are connected by council. So, but they do their own bidding. They know by they know where to look for aliens. They know how to find aliens. They know uh, which aliens are here and which aliens are not. And they have they get rid of those that do not uh, do their are not here for any purposes that they are liking. So are the men in black. So the, with the men in black try and find these reptilians? They know that they exist. They cannot get to those. They will not get to those. They are being protected by government. And, the, and men in black will not be dealing with the government as such. They may get to them in a different way. In a personal way, in a meet them off to the side, uh, find out what their preferences are, and get them in that perception but they will not deal with government on one on one because then they will be exposed for sure for certain so let me sneak with a question yes uh, if you you already know the first two species if you sort all the reptilian species dealing with earth there are major five species and we know about the first three species which are most positive second positive more or more or less balanced. Which one you're talking about the attack? Was it fourth or fifth or what? The, the lowest of them, yes. Would be the fifth? Yes. Thank you. But fourth is not far behind. The fourth and fifth even do not get along, even though they're both negative. They both have their own agendas for different things for the earth. They have different agendas for the earth. One is more into slavery and uh, getting them to come to a different place to do their bidding. And the other one is in there for their material wealth and uh, to take over the world, basically. They want to live here. What's the most desired material they, they get from Earth? Uh, mostly the radioactive materials and the very hard, hard diamond substances of that nature. Uh -huh. uh uh, when, when the trouble happened about six weeks ago, when you know, all this attack happened, yes. I tried to 
uh, accept it. Just accept as it is. Practice my acceptance. And part of it was taken that it is happening by design, that human collective agreed to that. How much wrong I was? Completely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, you should not accept it as it is, because as it is, it's negative, and you should not accept that. Logically, what you should do is say, this is a negative attack, and I will help myself out of it so that I might be able to help others. Do you understand that? And what was the second part of that? Was human collective approved? Oh, no, 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 no. Human collective wasn't even aware of it, so they were not agreeing to it. I see. They were not aware of the attack until they were told that it was an attack. Then they were aware of it, but they did not agree to it. No. I see. What's, what's the human collective, sir? Uh, would you like to explain to him what the human collective is? I would just define it as a collective spirit. Something, a uh, collective of human souls, it's over soul. Like our collective, Chakani collective, is, is much more there as a true community than you are. You are not a true community. You have communities where you get together and help each other and things of that name. But a true community can actually accept each other. But your communities cannot accept each other yet. Telepathy will help that bond of acceptance. Because when you get your telepathy, when it finally gets to you, when it, within the next 200 years or so, this is the beginning of it right now. But when you get that telepathy, you'll be able to understand, oh, they're so much more like me than I thought. And and what happens with telepathy is this. Your thoughts start becoming a little more defined. I mean, you, your species is diverse. You're everywhere. You're war, you're peace, you're love, you're hate, you're everything. We are peaceful, loving people. We know that hate exists. We know that anger exists. It happens with this, but not in the degrees that it happens here. You become a little bit more, the edges are all shaved off. There's no more jagged pointy, like if I were to be telepath telepathic with you, I wouldn't be stabbing you with my thoughts. Do you understand? I wouldn't be going, oh. I would be going, yes, I understand who you are. I understand who you are, I may not like who you are, but I accept you for who you are because that's who you choose to be. Whereas you do not do that, you do not accept people for who they choose to be necessarily. <laughs> do you understand that? This, and observe it regularly. <laughs> yes. So this is what telepathy does. It yeah. unites you as a community, whether you have the same thoughts, whether you do not, because you see and feel the intent of the other. And even though they may have a great intent, you may not agree with what they do. But you can accept it, because you can feel it, and you can know them better. You can sense them more. You are all individuals. You are not connected by any kind of senses like that. So, but when you become in, involved in senses with each other like that, my love with your love, ah, oh, much different, much different. I can see where you believe and how I believe, and I can say I accept that. I may not agree with it, but you know what? You're a good person otherwise. So there you have it. But many times on this planet, you will find that people will say, Oh no, I won't be near that person because they are just junk. <laughs> so even your, your negative tornadoes have good things in them. But you won't find that out or you won't find out anything good about them until you're able to connect with them in some way. Now, connecting with ver words, just with words, sometimes won't do it. Words, sometimes, 
You hear something that they didn't say, they said something you didn't hear. It's like your the misunderstanding with your text messages. How many times do you do text messages in this in this world? They have set 17 meetings when you read that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You look at it and you're going, okay. Have a great day. Have a great day. Have a great day. I don't know. Are they being sarcastic? Because they just told me that I was a dipwad. <laughs> so now they're writing, have a great day. Are they saying that they really mean for me to have a great day? Or are they just saying, have a great day, dipwad? <laughs> so... <laughs> You understand what I mean? Yes! It does happen. Yes. You are not communicating. That is not communication. Not truly. You must understand. I deal with this on a daily basis with your species. I see it happen. I, when, I, when I was studying to be what I am right now, I was seeing, how do I deal with that? What if I come into a situation where they're being sarcastic? How can I deal with that if I don't know what they're actually saying? Because it has more than one meaning. A phrase can have several meanings. Even among your black culture, they call each other bad names, but it's friendly. You say that to them, and you are in a war, fist fight. Knives are coming out. It's communication that is not true. Untrue communication. Do you understand? So, but when you find telepathy, when it is part of you, and some of you will come to it <coughs> sooner than others. Oh, this body <coughs> is dry. Uh, <coughs> There's water for it. There's water for it. All right, here we go. Get the body water. Oh. <laughs> better? This will relieve the problem. Yes. Oh, Thank you. Where was this? Oh, well. What was I saying? <coughs> communication. Ah, oh, communication. Telepathy. Developing telepathy. <coughs> Some of you will develop it before others. It's true. Some of you 50 years from now will have telepathy and it will take others 200 years to get it. <coughs> but, that is only a fact. Any questions? Can you tell more about yourself? <coughs> what would you like to know? You just mentioned that you're every day dealing with humans. What's your communication with humans? Well, I'm studying them. Uh -huh. Actually, I was going to different parts of the world, looking at different things, but I'm mostly studying the United States, Hawaii, Alaska, and Puerto Rico. So, um, in that sense, I found many cultural differences. I found many communication differences. I even found many language differences. And I had to understand them all. To come here tonight, I am in New York, so I'm using my New York voice. Huh. Are you <coughs> on the ground? I'm not on the ground, no, but I'm using my New York voice. Uh-huh. So what what's your you... specialty? Your communication specialist? Well, that's one of the things that I do. I'm a now specialist. I, I deal with the now. I deal with communication. I deal with personalities. I'm a psychiatrist but only on, in the sense that I am studying your psychological makeup. I'm uh -huh. a scientist. Uh -huh. So I under, that is how I am able to tell you these things that I am telling you now and how this message is important because it is unilaterally true for every, every one of your species. That logic will cure it from negativity. 
and when you realize that logically that you should not be a negative person and that you realize it that you are a negative person and you can change that you can change your world you can change your life and the lives of others and that is what the message I am here to tell you today logic not all this emotion necessarily it's not a bad thing I'm not saying that it's a bad thing I'm just saying Put it in check for a minute, get logical, and deal with it. Do you understand? Does that make sense to you in a way? <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Have so, you, have yes. you heard of the Star Trek, the fictional Star Trek character Spock? Oh, yes! <laughs> Was he a, um, a Vulcan? Yes, yeah. yes. And he I was half human and yes, yes. half Vulcan. <laughs> so, he, he had this conflict inside of him, and yes. it's a metaphor for this conflict. Oh, uh, yes, and he couldn't get rid of his emotions, just as you won't be able to get rid of yours. And I wouldn't want you to, but I would want you to put it in check when you find that it is, it is ruling you and you're not ruling it. Put it in check. I mean, emotions are a wonderful thing. I have emotions. I would not want to give away my emotions. I do not have them in nearly as strongly as you do in some ways because my negative emotions are under total check right now. They, I, I wash them out daily. Do you, do you understand that? I, I say, let's start this, let's be logical today and there is nothing for me to be upset about. If there is a death or if there's a something in, in my sensory development in the now that is negative, I can deal with it logically. Let's not deal with it emotionally first. Deal with it logically first. Then you may have the, emo the proper emotion come to it. Do you understand? Yeah. If it's sorrow, if it's sadness, if it's grief, if it's, a, if it's disappointment, frustration, all of these things must be dealt with logically first before you immediately feel uh. first you say okay what just happened you have to say that actually what just happened and then you can deal from it there and then logically there's no reason to be depressed until you logically figure out what just happened right and if it is something that is something negative that you must deal with then you take it from there and say thank you for this opportunity of learning because there is a reason for this disappointment, this longing, whatever it is. Let me learn from it, let me move forward from it. I do feel upset right now but I will not let it ruin my day because I am in charge. Many humans let it rule their days. It rules like a blowing wind. Yeah. But do not let it do that. It should not have to do that. It should not ruin your day. It should not ruin your week, your month, your year. And some people, it ruins their lifetime. I do not understand why they would let it do that. But they do. Because you know why? Because there's the cycle. The cycle's going. Negative. This, this now, this now, this now. All negative. No stop to say, let's look at this in a logical way. And let's change that to a positive flow. But like I said, when you get a negative flow going that strong, have you ever seen those great big whirlwinds, whirlpools in the water, where the water's swirling so fast? Yes, you can't stop it, can you? you put something in there and it just gets washed away there, but if there's strong enough will, you can stop that and get it going the other direction. But it takes a strong will, let me tell you. Mm. <clears throat> when it's going that fast, mm -hmm. strong. You have to be a strong-willed person because you let that cycle go and go and go and go and go without any thought of stopping it whatsoever. Oh, you might have said, oh, I hate feeling this way. Oh, of course you do. But what did that say to the universe? Oh, they hate feeling that way, so let them hate feeling that way. So You didn't say anything positive, really. 
Do you understand that? So the universe did not hear anything positive at all. Any more questions? I have one, two. How old are you and how did you come into being? How old am I? Oh, in ye Earth years, I am probably about 200. Percent-wise to Chakani. Yes. Percent-wise to Chakani. Uh, are you old Chakani or young? No, Chikani? no, I'm not an old Chakani. I'm a middle-aged Chakani, uh, okay. probably a little <laughs> early for middle age, but okay. yes. And how did you come into being? I came into being with my parents, the same as you come into being, a little differently perhaps, but not much, not enough to speak of. Mother, father, we don't have the same kind of family units that you have. They are there is a family unit. It's just not the same. Do you have children? Of course. Do you have hybrid children with earthens? No. Ah. Do you have incarnations on earth? <clears throat> yes, there is a couple. We have been to Earth many times, and there have been some matings <laughs> with our kind, but it is not. You will not find many with our species in their bloodline. Uh -huh. Do you talk to your incarnations on Earth? No, I do not. Ah. I invite my incarnation to speak to me. Uh, my incarnation up there to speak to me. Ah, uh, yes. You also mentioned that um, you didn't want to compete with Bashar. I think it is a logical mistake. I think there is not enough Bashar, there is not enough uh, communication with Chakani. The more the better. Well, that is why I'm here, One because it was agreed that I will, at this point, he is so established that I could do nothing to harm him in any way. Yes. So I am here now, and it was not really a fighting point, it was just a matter of respect. Wonderful. How often do you see Bashar? Um, in this now, I see him... Like once every few of your Earth weeks. Uh, how often do you talk to him telepathically or you know, communicate to him? Much more often? Every now and then, yes. Uh -huh. We speak, yes. He is a, he is a wise, he is actually a, a bit older than I am. Uh -huh. and if you want to go by that, we really don't pay attention to time the way you pay attention to time. Uh, I have to really think about that because my age is irrelevant in, in, the, in the passage of things. I will get to a certain time or a certain experience which will end my life. I don't even like to call it time because it's, that's not what it is. But a certain thing will happen and I will be released into spirit. When you are born, do you keep the memory of previous lives? or Of course. Have... Yes. We have chakras just like you. No, I mean the conscious physical memory of past lives. We do have some of those, yes. Huh. The ones that are necessary for the reason for this particular lifetime are always evident within the first five years of life. And then after that, well, the first five years of our life in your time um, we're way farther advanced, so we know a lot of, of different course, yes. things in the first five years that you do not know for 50 years. So, um, in that sense, yes, we are aware of many things, and then we use that information to build our logical life in the now. I have a couple more very important questions. Yes. One is... Bashar announced that Chakani is are writing a book about Chakani. Uh, is this book coming out? It was due to come out maybe half a year ago. I am not to say anything about that because that Fine. is not my project. Fine. Uh, another thing, Bashar announced some time ago that he is scheduled to die by this time, but he's still around. Did he get an extension? We really welcome that extension. Did he get an extension or something? Um, the now of Bashar is close to an end, uh -huh. but 
it is not at an end. And when he says soon, for our species, that could be many, many years. Uh-huh. Wonderful. We really welcome that. Of your Earth years. But yes, he's an older Chakani. We welcome that. Are you physical now? Chakani made a move towards fifth dimension. Are you still physical? How physical are you? We are somewhat physical. Uh-huh. I cannot tell you how physical because you would not understand a word that I would say. But uh, we can, we are beyond fourth dimension, fourth density uh -huh. at this uh -huh. time. Did you change your appearance or are you still there? The there is a slight change in appearance, yes. Because of the density, yes. Do you have a wife? I choose not to answer that. Oh, that's fine. You that's, yeah. But um, is there any other questions? You please please continue. Yeah, you're, um, your life mission or whatever you called it a while back is you spend a lot of your current time studying America and other places. Yes, I was there. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> How do you do that? Do you have access to a plane of information where everything is known? I have very much information, yes. But I prefer to stay in the now. Mm -hmm. So I visit in the now and take a holographic, uh, several hours of holographic film and bring that back and watch that and interact with each person in it in their own way. Usually I try to get where there's groups of people and there's a lot of interaction and then I try family settings as well and I try um, just all different scenarios to bring those back and study people in their elements and in their different in their different uh, like weddings and things of that nature. It's amazing to me how the same person, I, I can do this with a one person as well. I can take that one person and bring them through many scenarios. It is amazing to me when I discovered that you can bring one person through t 10 scenarios and they're slightly different in every one. Slightly different in every 10 scenarios. And I'm going, why? I had to discover why. It took me years to discover how diverse. This is what Grukvik Nier is now discovering, which we discovered many years ago, that the diversity is incredible. Just incredible. Because of the, tele the lack of telepathy, there are many thoughts, uh, like in children. Um, I, I talk to a child in, in, a, in a play holographic scenario where they were not conscious, of course. But they thought that Washington, D.C. was across the ocean. Or they thought that... Um, Bouncing balls were magic because they could do something that n other things couldn't do. The, the mind of a child on your planet is just so amazing. So, but uh, you will know what I'm talking about. So, our children are not so because things are taught to them immediately. I mean, this is, it's, it it's just happens. So... Yes. What you're talking about children in schools. Yes. How can we impact our schools in a more positive way to increase more telepathy in our children? Well, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in, in the early 80s, uh, something happened to your children that they're exponentially... Exponential. Whatever. They are... <laughs> I mean, that's Jim's error. I'm using his word. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> they are smarter than they used to be by several percent. Not all the same, of course. But it happened almost all the way across the planet that children are being born with higher IQs suddenly. Now, what happened there? What happened that all of the sudden... They're born with higher IQs. 
and they're be able to understand more things, and they will bring that to the schools, by the way. Um, but the other thing is that, is that they are being taught by aliens, and their parents know it. Okay. Their, their parents know that they're being taught by aliens. <laughs> they're taken away, and they are actually talk about it to their parents, mostly to the mothers. They tell their mom, well, and the mother asked, so you said you went away last night? Where did you go? I was talking to an alien baby. And what did this alien baby look like? It was a little gray and it would play. We talked about this and that, and, you know. They think nothing of it. And yet, what they're being taught, and I can tell you this, is they're ta being taught how to, to manipulate time, to make it useful for them. They're taught how to manipulate their own lives to be more useful. They're taught how to be more positive. They're taught how to be more creative. Usually the more creative children are taken and being taught so that they can grow and become leaders for such things as actions for humanity to rise. Is actions it, for is this the work of your race? No, it is not. This is the uh, work of Yil race, Pleiadian race, and several others. Syrian race is also doing this. Um, Lyran race. Some Andromedans. There are several species involved in this actions with the children and the galactic downloads of languages. Many people are getting languages that they don't understand and they're speaking them. And, and they, they're going crazy because it's, they're starting to speak a language they don't understand. These are galactic languages not from, not from Chakani. You what? mentioned teaching operating with time, teaching children how to manipulate time. Yes. I recently I met <clears throat> very strange phenomenon. Few friends, they completely live in different time. Their time is completely different than mine. Right. They are living way slower. Yes. I do a lot of things during the day, and by the end of the day, they may decide to wake up and, you know, do something. Yes. Is it me or is it them and uh, how they interpret this? This is their awareness. This is how they were conditioned. Humans can be conditioned to be any way that you want them to be. Even, even very intelligent humans can be in conditioned to live very slowly or undeveloped lives. There are many geniuses pumping gas. So that is a conditioning of the society upon them of their families, peers, and society. Where they grew up, how they perceive what is happening, what is told to them about their perceptions, and how they deal with that. So they can be conditioned to be, you can be conditioned from an early age to be anything. You know, I, there are other things that you are born with, many many things that you are born with, of course, but there are many societal conditionings that can be brought about. Let, let me turn it a little different. Is it more advanced, is it more evolutionary advanced to live faster, or maybe they are more advanced living slower, maybe they age slower this way? If people live way slower, who is more advanced? Fast it's, people, slow people? I, it does not matter which one. It is, what matters is that the highest resonation of their being is being sought after and accomplished. They can do that slowly. They can do it quickly. It does not matter the speed as long as they are on the right path. Now, if they are not on the right path, that is another thing entirely. All right. That was my take, too. Thank you. Mm. Why did you pick America? Because I find it to be the most interesting. Um, if you go to Europe, if you go to, they're much the same there in the way that they live their lives. There are different cultural things there, but there are quiet people in, their, in the family unit. 
not much conversation, interestingly, until they get out into public. But in the family unit, it's very quiet, unless there's company or whatever. But they're quiet and concerned and conservative, I should say conservative. And they do believe in aliens and a lot, but they don't discuss it at all. But yet if somebody would to bring it up, they would probably discuss it quicker than anybody in the United States. They don't have the innate fears in their society that you do in the United States. Do you understand that? Even in um, China, Japan, and places like that, they tend to be more community in the sense that they're more alike in some ways. Whereas the United States is very diverse. Well, this is the land of rugged individualism. That's, that's our heritage. Yes, so and it's, it's very interesting to me. That's why. But I, I can go to Canada even and find much sameness. Where in the United States I can find many, 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 many diverse cultures, interests, languages. The, it's amazing to me. More than anywhere else. Do you, um, what do you do with this information? Do you teach classes on your, with, to your people about I do life here? Are you like a, like a university mm -hmm. professor or? I do share this information. I do write it down. Well, in the sense that it is recorded. I shouldn't say write it down. It is recorded for others to view and understand. And I do get many questions. So it is, it is a, for me, it is a wonderful thing that I do because I enjoy it very much. It's my highest resonation. It's what I really want to do. And it makes me very happy to share the information. It makes me very happy to meet you. It makes me very happy to interact with you because I find you, I can see that there's all diversity even within the room. Do you understand? It's where, as if I were in Europe, there would not be so much diversity in the room. There might be some. Of course there will be. But it's not as extreme. How often do you talk to groups like, how often do you talk through someone like Jim? This is only my second time. Oh. I did speak through Jim one other time, but it was in a private session. It was practice. But I did very well. I would like to, to ask you to volunteer to help our contacts in the colonies. Yes. I w if you would be interested, I would recommend that you offer your, your expertise to this do, to occur. If um, they will listen to me, that I am fine with that. But we, we politely are, we have different views on many things. But I can, we do chat. I mean, we do have... Our times, our moments of, uh, of conversation, yes? And we do exchange information. Wonderful. Um, and they are very open to that. There, there is no problem there. They do not always accept it, but they, do, they are very willing to look at it. I would invite you to be more proactive in the colonies, maybe teach a class in the colony. Maybe if they would start, have me, I would do such. Maybe start an interest group there to speak maybe to aliens explaining them how the humans are. Because I believe Chakani have lots more understanding of humans than Yael. Oh, could you tell that from what I said to you tonight? Uh, mostly from Bashar. I think Bashar knows a lot. and oh, He's, he's been dealing with you a lot longer than I have. I understand Chakani share all that understanding. Yes, so. we do. We share a likeness in many ways. So I would invite Chakani to share that knowledge of humans with Yael and help them with the plans, with the content, much more proactively. Yeah, this is my first public session. We really appreciate you coming through. Is I there any more questions? Yeah. Is there any more questions or should I go? <clears throat> I have a question. Yes. How, how does physical travel occur across such a vast distance, you know, you well, talk about the Andromedans, I mean, we don't know how to get there, but apparently they know how to get here. Exactly. Um, how does that work? Well, you must understand that the universe is a dangerous place, first of all. 
Um, the, it has many gas pockets. It's full of unseen things, black matter, dangerous things that cannot be seen or detected at times because of the way that it is formulated in the universe. So they had to... Um, so early on, they would send out a spaceship and it would explode because it would run into a gas pocket or run into something uh, that was not detectable. So what they learned to do was fold time. So this was in your logic, in your Einstein period. He actually is the one that suggested that it was possible. And it is possible because Time is not linear. So, and space is not linear. It can be torn. It, it, is, it is a fabric in some ways. And so it can be manipulated, if you will. And so they take a ship here from their planet. They fold over space many times. And they end up here with the spaceship. And it's orbiting your planet. But they did not have to travel. They did not have to do all that traveling. It happens within a matter of, I don't know how much Earth time you would call it, perhaps five hours. It, it does, it's not like two seconds, but it does happen within five, six hours of Earth time. They can go from their place to this place. <clears throat> how, how, uh, this is, might be a crazy question, but how close are we to having the understanding and technology to be able to do that. They've already asked for it. Your people have already asked for it. It has not been given to you yet. It is too advanced for you right now. You would destroy yourself with it. Um, and that is not being, that's not saying that you're unintelligent. It's well, just, yeah. it's just volatile and very uh, hard to work with. And you're, you would have a tendency to be careless because many were careless before. Like with nuclear power, for example. Exactly. <laughs> so therefore, you do not have that technology, but it will be coming within the next probably 40 years. I guess in, in some ways it's up to us, right? Yes. you. How it's, fast we evolve emotionally and spiritually. Exactly. Yeah. And that is being monitored continuously. So, would Chicania be interested in having their own human colony? It has been discussed. That is all I will say. Uh, if you invite volunteers, tons of volunteers will join because people love Bashar and trust Chicania. Yes, it in some forms. A human colony for us would be illogical, but I can't explain that to you. But in some forms, it would be perfectly logical. The now has everything to do with that logic. And what you see on the planet is the now, which changes constantly. And there are some nows that would make it very much a good thing, and there are some nows that would make it impossible. Does that make sense to you? No. <laughs> that is okay. I think you're talking about timelines. That's yeah. my understanding. <laughs> I got lost there. Yeah. That is all right. It was a scientific question. And Max understood it. I think you talk about timelines. Yes, I am. And how many timelines are you looking at the moment? 370. Uh, yeah, Yale, I think they said they're looking at three to five timelines. Yes. And you're looking at 370 timelines. Yes. Oh, say hi to me in other timelines. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't get it, but... <laughs> I know that you're not permitted to do that, but uh, I, I wished you to pass uh, my greetings to myself in other timelines. Ah! Ah! Okay, now I get it. You're just below me. <laughs> or above me, I'm not sure. 
anybody. Yes, you've started uh, working with humans and healings. Healings, yes. Healing is an interesting subject. I'm very interested in how humans heal. Mm -hmm. The medication world is has actually elongated your lives in an unhealthy way. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. You? Yeah. Yes. Completely. Yes. 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 We just never heard it put that way before. Yes. Very well. It's excellent. Pardon? What? Very well. Yes. yes. It has elongated your life, but you're not happy. You're much better. For you. <laughs> you feel like. Um, you shouldn't have probably taken that because it gives you stomach problems. It makes you have um, digestive problems, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Your life is not better for it, really. You live longer, but you're but you have a long face. So, yes, I am now looking at the things that like you would be involved in the Reiki. Yeah, you are a Reiki healer, correct? I can feel your energy, yes. And there's other Reiki healers here today. Ooh, yes, very <laughs> nice. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, there's much Reiki here, yes. Mm. Oh, very good. Lots of, lots of energy coming from you, yes. Very good. And this is what interests me, is these kind of groups seem to be higher evolved with the, the, the practice of energy healing and healing without the use of man-made chemicals with herbal and things of ancient use. Where did you think those ancient uses come from? Where? The, the aliens. Thank you. So they would tell you, no, I mean, people would eat the plants, but they didn't know what made them better or it made them worse. They knew some not to eat because it would kill them. Because like somebody went out and ate one and it was like, oh, don't eat that. But um, they didn't know that some things would make them better. Who, th who do you think taught them that? I mean, they didn't just say, hey, you know, I ate some of that the other day. I feel a lot better. It didn't occur to them that way. The gods made me feel better. It wasn't the food, you know. But the... Um, but the aliens taught them their herbal. They say, try these things together. Try these things together. Your, these things have these chemicals in them, and they're natural, and you can take these and become more healthy. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It wasn't an accident that five different things came together and are healthy for you, that are natural. <laughs> we know about these things. The other species knows about these things. My friends and neighbors in the galaxy knows about these things. So we were teaching back then many natural things. And we told you to stay away from certain things because you didn't know how to... They were edible, but you didn't know how to prepare them. And so we taught you how to prepare them so that they were edible. <laughs> it's very funny, but yes, this happened. Are there ways that we can encourage more people in our communities to be aware of things like energy healing, Reiki? Yes, you can be a system. The yeah, thing right is, now, it is we're, we are helping you with that. The eyes are opening one by one. It's a slow process at first. But once a, there is a core group, and that core group comes together to, as a larger core group, then it starts pulling people in because when there's 20 or 30 people talking about something, they're not as afraid to tell their neighbor, there's 30 people over here doing this. <laughs> not two. Yeah, the two witches that, that stirred the cauldron, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> they're safety in numbers. Exactly. So when you get this core group going, when there's 30 or 40, like what you're doing at your YMCA with all the Reiki there, I've been watching that, it gets more popular every time you go. The results are better and better and better. And now they're not afraid to say, I'm going to go over and have some Reiki right now. 
it's not like saying, I'm going over to, to slice a blowfish and try that out. But, um, but they will go now, if they see that there's ten people in there having a Reiki, they will try it. And they will understand it. But if there's two people in there, and, and they're waving their hands around and stuff like that, they're going to be going, uh-huh, I'm going to Pilates. <laughs> so, right? Yes. So, safety in numbers. Get that core group going. They sound like a commercial. But, it's true. There's safety in numbers. The more people that join your group, the more people you're going to bring in. Yes? What is your thinking on when you die? Cremation or burial? Is there any... Of humans? Of are humans? They, yes. It doesn't matter because already the spirit is gone. Right. It doesn't matter what you do with the body. It really doesn't because that essence that was you is not there anymore. It has already left. It's already joined the other essence of energy in the universe as an individual set of spirit. Do you understand that? Energy spirit. It cannot be, it can be mingled with others, but it remains what it is forever. So therefore, if you want to do anything with the body, stand it up in a corner. I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it does not matter what you do with the body. It matters that the soul and energy has been released. And you may do whatever you want with the body. You may harvest it or do whatever. <laughs> they don't call it stuff for nothing. Yes. It is no longer useful. Except perhaps for fertilizer. Is, um, is um, incarnation across the different plants and races happening yes. a lot? Yes. It does, yes. Much more than you think. People will only, when they intend a lot of people to see their past lives, they only want to see their human lives, so that's what they get. But behind every one of your chakras remains all your past lives. You bring them all with you. You bring them all forward with you, and they're all here as, as an encyclopedia of who you are. And, if you asked for your alien lives to be brought forth, they will be. What percent of humans don't have alien past lives? A very small percent. Maybe 4%. Hmm. Thank you. Because, I will tell you why. Because once you get into the spirit world, once you get up there and know the spirit world, as we have been able to study it in our own ways by bringing spirits back. But um, you realize that they want to experience more than just one planet. If, they, if their highest resonation as a spirit is to be a spirit guide, they must learn about all the different spirits and all the different circumstances and all the different things that happen to spirits and happen to humans. If they're going to be a human spirit guide, they must know inside and out what the human is about. That's why they have so many lives. They had so many lives because they're learning, okay, this life I was a woman and I had this and that. And this life I was a man and I did this job and I, this life I was troubled and, and I pulled myself out of it or I didn't or why I didn't. All these things are learning, 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 learning to be able to help when you become a spirit guide. Because if you don't know anything, you can't help. Are physical beings, are we always a physical person? Might I have been a dog at one time and come? Or does it work that way? You intend to be what you intend to be from the spirit world. If you are going to be a dog spirit guide, you might want to be a dog. Okay. So. Do, do they overlap at all, or a dog spirit is always a dog spirit? A dog spirit is a dog spirit. Okay. But you can become a dog spirit 
and it will become in your next life, you will bring that spirit with you. But you are not anything but a dog when you are a dog. You do, nobody's going to read your past lives, even though they're there. Okay. They're there within their chakras, but nobody's going to read them when you're a dog. That's a controversial point. How often do humans incarnate as animals? Not much anymore. They used to? They used to because they wanted to understand them. Huh. Well, right now, how many animals on Earth have human spirits in them? I do not know. Any? At all? Yes, there are some. Huh. Because many people ask if they're... There are some, but it's by choice. It is by choice. It, you do not accidentally become a dog. Many people ask if their pets are incarnated friends of but you. How many exceptional dogs do you see? If not. There are some. They may be incarnates. You know, exceptionals. But this, you do not have to be a dog. A dog can be a, a dog in his next life if you want. So that's fine. Can they be something else? Um, it's not likely that they want to be, but yes, they can be. Okay. Until they evolve to a level where they want to be something else, most dogs just want to be dogs. It's How not a bad life. Huh? It's not a bad life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have a look. How would they evolve? <laughs> How would they evolve, though? How would they evolve out of being a dog? How would they evolve out? Yes, they can do, they can evolve out, but I can't explain to you, it takes many centuries. Oh, but um, okay. it will, they can evolve out just as we, have, as when we first started our evolution, not you, but Chakani, as we first started our evolutions, for, as small, meaningless creatures millions and millions of years ago, we evolved and <coughs> pulled ourselves up, yes, and awareness, you see, this is the part that has to become aware. Yes, this brain here. So, the brain has to become aware of what it wants to be, other than a dog. But the spirit leaves as a dog, continues as a spirit as a dog, and usually it's set right back down as a different dog. But, they learn each time they go. Okay. That you learn something new. So. so are the dog spirits up with the human spirits? Certainly. If somebody incarnates into Earth yes. a, a bunch of times and then chooses to incarnate, say, incarnate, say to your planet, yes. to be part of your race, yeah. isn't that an incredible like, vibrational shock? Well, well yes. What happens with that? Let me explain something to you. Whenever a reincarnation occurs, you realize you are of available to the knowledge that when you go back into that a different species you're starting from the beginning your memory do you remember being in your last life no of course not so but if you become a chikani you will not remember your past lives until you're with it within the first five years and then you will start to remember some of your past lives and you will experience them as if you were there, in some ways, as I did. I experienced perhaps like an hour of one life and two hours of this one, and it was very powerful. Yeah. It's a powerful mind suggestion because they put you in an area where it stimulates those chakras to the past lives that you need to remember for this life. So it's all in context, basically. Yes. I can look at that lower vibration Earth incarnation in the context of a higher vibration. Exactly. You, yeah. you will see that it was a powerful, that the images that you're given are powerful and emotional. And they are very, you, you know exactly what you learned at that time. You know exactly what was being taught to you at that time. And these are very important images for you because you are raising, you are in another dimensional being. Yeah. And, and um, 
it's interesting that you would pick Chakani to be reincarnated into because a lot of people will not choose Chakani until they have risen to fourth dimension first because it's too much of a jump. Yeah. So how many spirits from humans do you have at the moment in, the, in your civilization? Oh, I'm sure we have several. Several. Um, I'm, not, I'm not in any doubt because humanity has been around many times. Mm -hmm. There's many Atlanteans here. Atlanteans? Yes. Lemuria. Uh -huh. Huh? Lemuria. Yeah. And how many Chakani spirits are incarnated mm -hmm. now on, on Earth? Is it few or many? There are some. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you why that they came back to a third density. Uh -huh. There was something that they missed in their education or did not learn properly in their education and they wouldn't like to experience it in full mm -hmm. so that they can move to somewhere else. Yes. Do you share spirits with some other civilization which you know like Lirans, Pleiadians, Yael? We share with El, we share with uh, Elohim spirit world uh -huh. um, and we share with a couple others that are not known to you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Is there any more questions? I right. have two minutes of battery left. <laughs> oh, well, then, it's, <laughs> <laughs> then I... Is that my cue to leave? No, 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 I have another battery. You can stay. <laughs> <laughs> you can stay if you like. Ah, American peoples, the North American people, the Mexican people, the Canadian people, the uh, Eskimos, the, the uh, or Aborigines of Australia. You know, there's so much diversity. The Chinese, the Japanese, you know, I could go on and on. Uh, the Mongols. So, you know, very different, actually, in some ways. Very same, but very different. Culturally trained from the universe, they brought their cultures with them. And they, and when some of them were um, not from mainstream culture as well, some of them were divergent. Uh, there's the word divergent. Uh, that's not a right word. They were um, divergent. Um, they just were nomadic in their space travel. They decided they wanted to break away and go somewhere else, and they landed here, and they started their own little culture, and it still exists. Native Americans, for an example. Native Americans, very different kind of culture than any other on the earth, in some ways. Where from did they come? They came from the stars. And you never know. I, uh, you find that out for yourself. Did they? So, they somehow got here, yet that, but then lost a lot of their technical knowledge. They decided they didn't want it. Some of them. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Because where they came from, it, the technical knowledge is what they were warring against. Ah. Um. So they're sort of like hippies. That yes, they came here I, to you know ride bicycles I and grow their own hippies. food. Yes, okay. interesting subculture. Yes, and still around. Yes. So what did they do with like did they come here in spaceships like saucers? Yes, and they had them disintegrated, and they're all there's nothing but ashes left. So of them. there's no archaeological type record. Oh, no, no. No, but no, but no, yet, those that have seen them when they landed, there are cave dwelling drawings, there's all kinds of things left for you to, to research, of course, yes. And, um, but yet, they would not have, they would take their, they would destroy everything, of course, make it into nothing. And they would take the metal and make it look like it was just natural, you know, grind it up or whatever. So it's, you will never find, and if you do find something, it was a mistake. Have you, have you heard of The Course in Miracles? And what are your thoughts about it? The Course in Miracles. I've only, I heard of it, but I'm not really, really, truly uh, knowledgeable of it. 
I've been more studying the people than the the different things that they uh, that they are reading and things. But I do see a correlation between what they read and what they do. So I will get into that eventually. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I can recommend that you look at that as part. What of is it story. called again? The Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles. It's a body of, it's a reinterpretation oh, miracles, of, yes. of the work of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, I am and a little familiar. The Phoenix through. Papers. They, some people call them the Phoenix Papers. I haven't heard that, but maybe. Um, yes, I'm aware of those. It was it's, a, it's a body of work that was channeled by a psychologist in New York City. Yes, it's, it has city. several names. Yes, I am aware of that. And yes, it is actually more accurate than the Bible. That's, that's its claim, yeah, exactly, is that the Bible got a lot of things wrong. A lot of things. Yeah. But the thing is, it didn't get a lot of things wrong originally. It got a lot of things wrong as it moved through yeah. your each century and decade, and people decided to change a word here and a word there to make it more hospitable to their soul. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the right thing to do, but slowly... It had its own evolution, as you would say. Yeah. I mean, I think you might be interesting for your studies because yes. that body of work is taking a lot of different forms and having a big vibrational yes. uplifting force um, around the planet, especially. Uh, yes, I think I'm aware of it, yes. Uh, but I did not know of it by that name. I do know of it by the Phoenix Papers and the Rising. Uh, there's, a, there's several names for it now around the world. It has different names, and it is becoming, people are becoming very, very aware of it. What's and the name? The Rising what? The Phoenix Rising. The Phoenix, oh, Rising, Phoenix Rising, and the one's just called the Phoenix Journals, I believe. Um, I'm not sure, okay. but I believe that's the same thing that I'm thinking of. Do you know why we're having so many South Americans coming up to North America? Um... No, I really haven't studied that, but I'm sure it has something to do with the culture down there as being very low as far as uh, financially and uh, spiritually and culturally starting to fall apart. Because I do notice that there are certain cultures that are molding together to, and they're not original anymore. They're, they're a melting pot of different cultures and they're becoming more popular, especially in this day and age where people are becoming closer together in the sense that the world is a small place here in your planet now. Not as small as it will be, but it is getting smaller in the last couple decades, very much smaller. And this is something that you will see, it's going to start to smooth out as far as cultures in some areas Will become, they'll become more large areas of the, a similar culture. So the children she's referring to, they're mainly children apparently. Oh yes, I know what she speaks of. Yes. These are the children you mentioned earlier, I guess, that come in with a lot of knowledge. Yes. They already know what, what us adults yes. <laughs> years to learn. Yes. And they want to come to America, is that what's happening? It, it is a place of opportunity for them in, in more than just economical, it's spiritual, educational, it's in so many ways they need nurtured and this is the place for it. Their nurturing is important. These formative years that they are going through, even with the diversity and problems that they are having, are going to be very, very important to the future. Well, it seems like the, the educational culture they're coming into in America, uh, in my humble opinion, <laughs> seems to be falling apart. Or it's changing. It's changing so fast that the, the adult world is not able to respond to what the children need. You're correct. What do you about that? But the thing is, the children's ideas will come to light. They will people will be inspired by the words of these children and things will change and things will start to rise up from those thoughts. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way. Okay. A new way of education is coming. 
Yes. And a new format for education is coming. It has to change. What's your favorite development in recent years of, on the earth? What's, what are we doing well? Um, you're, one of the things is that your medications are becoming more natural. In all cultures, not just the United States, but in European cultures, also in um, the Orient as well, they're going back to earlier and more effective healing processes. The other thing that is important is it's becoming educationally acceptable to get um, a degree in homeopathic medicine or in things that have not earlier been accepted but things are coming to light that you can get degrees now in some places in herbology and, and things of this nature in other countries right now but this was this is something recent this is something recent within the last 20 of your earth 20 or 30 of your earth years where you can now go to another country and get alternate education on these wonderful things. That, that I see. How big of a problem is global warming? Um, you cause global warming to a point. But it, there is global warming happening. However, the way that it's formulating on your planet, it could turn into an ice age. So, because you're pushing the boundaries of global warming past where it should be at this time. Do you understand that? And you mean, you're, you're, you mean no, no, not quite. So you're saying there's a natural warming that we've amplified? Yes. Okay. And so, because you amplify that warming, you're going through that period faster. You will go through your global warming faster and you will hit an ice age sooner, probably. Sooner. sooner. Yeah. And that is much worse than the global warming. Take my word, you do not want an ice age. No. Ice age comes on like that as well. Uh, if you would study your geographical and your, your records of the surface layers, what's that? Geological. Called? Geography. Geology. Geography. Geography. Geology. Geology. Yeah, there you go. Your geology is when the ice age hits, they have plants that are frozen in place because it hits so suddenly that it just, it's like uh, 40 degrees, 10 degrees. You know, it's, it's, and snow, four inches, two feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, 18 feet. So, um, and it, it doesn't give you much time. It really doesn't. I mean, this can happen, as you see with the, the weather in the United States, these rains that are coming now. Imagine that that was snow. Imagine if you were having the seven inches of rainfall now in two days. What would that translate into snow? 84 inches. Quite a lot. <laughs> Quite a lot, and so therefore I fear for you if you go through your, your global warming too fast, 84 inches in two days is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. 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 Is that likely to come in the lifetime of these people? It is likely the way you're moving at this time. That is why there are, there are species helping you. Our species is helping you with the educational part. With many things in education. Um, the Yugil and the Lyrans are helping you with seismic, weather. You realize that seven inches of rain in two days was cut down from 14 inches of rain in two days. They helped you with that. Do you understand that? How, how, what kind of help is that? You mean oh, yes. meteorological control? Yes, meteorological control, which the government is very aware of, and are like a little bit, what is the word? Jim's word is freaked out. But um, they are a little 
freaked out that uh, they can't do anything but the aliens can uh, with something like that because what happened with this last what you call El Nino the water is warmer now in the Pacific Ocean than it's been in many 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 years and that is going to cause major major water to be coming into your area major water including the drought areas or is it um, going to get worse? Depending on the, your jet stream, which the dry areas will stay dry and the wet areas will get wetter. This cold, a sudden change to ice age or whatever, sudden cold, yes. is that usually due to the a geological pole shift? Well, you're three degrees off your, your pole axis at this time, which that is also being helped because every so many thousands of years your earth flips over and that destroys some races of people but it's being controlled at this point and so if it maintains where it is now you'll go into natural your your natural ge geological states yes i'm sorry jim I keep saying geography yeah okay um, so are we likely to see a pole shift in our lifetimes no, because we're trying, well, not I, not we, but Grick Fickneer and several other species are trying to keep that. You're somehow stabilizing Yes, the it's entire... stabilized at this time. It has been stabilized. Otherwise, it would have probably already happened, to be honest with you. Okay, and in a similar manner, sunspots and solar flares? There are ways to, yeah, solar flares are a problem. Um... They are dealing with those. We are giving them some technological help with that. But we are not building the technology. They are building the technology. The Orions actually built the technology that will be used to help you for uh, solar flares. Orions are an interesting species. They start building things and they get it almost perfect and then they lose interest and start building something else and then they give it to some other species to finish off. I got a few friends like that. Um, they get it almost right and then they lose interest and go to something else because something else has come up that's really important and they start to... So what happens is they hand it off to another species who then finishes the development and then it's, uh, then it's used. Which species would be finished? Yeah, they've... Uh, Octurians finish up a lot of the Orion mm -hmm. things, so that's one of the species that really... And the Syrians help the Octurians in some well, way. Were they positive Orions or negative Orions? They're neutral Orions. Neutral Orions, good. Yes. Okay. Pretty much, they're pretty positive, I would say. Thank you. Why? Um, is it a good idea to interfere so much with natural things like solar flares and pole shifts and that kind of thing? Like well, what, what they want this timeline, it's, it's a real goal. It's a high resonation with uh, Gurk Fichtnir and many other species. A high resonation to keep this timeline alive for the humanity so that they can be friendly with it. So they can actually intermingle and they can become part of the universe. They are aware that they have crossed some lines. We have not. We are just communicating and giving intellectual and uh, spiritual guidance and practical guidance. But yet they are actually tampering, I would say, with things that they know that they should not, but they want the timeline to exist so badly that they will help it as much as they can. And you know what? This is was predicted, so... We, we, we seem to have a lot, of, a lot of universal attention. At this point, you are one of the focal points of the universe. Why, why is that? Like, what's so, because what's of your... About this place? Uh, because of your, A, diversity, the way that you're handling your ascension, the way that your people handle everything, pretty much, um, and... Um, the human colonies are an interest. Your, your return to uh, ancient uh, thought patterns in some ways 
is a very big study within the universe as well. So um, you're being observed more than you are being tampered with. You're being observed because you are at the beginning of your evolution, your next evolutionary step, and people are studying it. So you are in the your the workbook for the universe. Yes. No wonder I'm so busy. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this is really quite a place for it to be observed, and many are observing. And if you even go to YouTube or whatever your places are, you will find that there's. They they are actually telling you that there's ships in the in the in the um, uh, solar system. Your solar system. There's actually ships that they can observe in the solar system, and they don't know why they're there, and they're here to observe, and they haven't moved. They they're just there, and some of them are huge, 26 miles long in your in your. Uh, You've heard of that one, right? Yeah, like a big cigar. That's yeah, the big cigar. Miles yeah, long and some number of miles wide. It's supposedly. A million population. Yes, it's supposedly filled with liquid, but I don't know if that's true or not. I do know that um, it's not a species that we have been familiar with, and we're not about to be familiar with it until they're ready to say hello. We found that. Saying hello first sometimes is a bad move, especially if we're more advanced, which we are. Do you know how you came into existence besides a mother and a father? I mean, your whole peoples? The peoples? Yeah. Your, your oh, we've come, we came from a very, very far away. We're, this is not our home territory. Uh, we're from a different galaxy altogether. Mm. So that is why we're, we're closer to the beginning than a lot of species, if you understand that. Say more about that. Um, we were, we we're an earlier species than those that have formed after us. Um, there are many enlightened species, but we're an ancient species. Do you know how you popped into being? The same as any. Um, we were created as well, in some senses, from the gold, from the gold threads. So, there, in the very beginning, there were the gold threads that were, were alive, that had the first sentience. They were the gold threads of life, the, the beginnings. And, and they could break off and become different things. And some of those gold friend, th threads became us. Is that why gold is so important to us? Gold is important, yes. Okay. Well, I have been here quite a while. I think I will leave you now and bring Jim back. I hope you have enjoyed this, as I have. <laughs> it was very fun. Yes, it was wonderful and we really welcome Chakani to come to the gym. Um, it's nice to have an open channel now with Chakani. Yes, I have been wondering if I should come tonight all week. And I decided that it was important, the message that I gave at the first. So We are really thankful and we really appreciate it. It's wonderful. Yes, we were missing you, Chakani, we were missing yes. you in our channeling sessions. So yeah. it's finally it's happening. Yeah. It's wonderful. So do you need to compete with the other people who want to speak to Jim for competing for time? I do not compete. If I want to come through, I will come through. You're welcome to come through. Thank, Thank you. you. Come yes. often. Thank come you. next time. Thank you for we have no arguments with each other. If I say I would like to come and they say, well, I would like to come also, I say, well, you will come after me or before me, whichever you choose. And we will make a, we will make a thought pattern and it will happen. Wonderful. Thank you. But Thank no, you. you're welcome. Thank you. I will bring Jim back to you. It was wonderful meeting you all. And have a glorious evening. It looks like it's evening. There is no light. Namaste to you. Namaste. That is your word, correct?
Hello. Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi. Hi. If you're tired, it's understandable. How long was it? It's like two, more than two hours, I guess. Or oh, two hours? Yeah. Was really? Longest, it was the longest channeling of yours. Oh, my gosh. Uh, two Earth hours are going by. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Was it really that long? Yes. yes. Wow. Wow. That's a long time. I don't think I've ever channeled that long. How do you feel? I feel great. It was actually always, always feels very well. I always, they always leave me sort of energized, and now when I go home and go to bed, I'll be out because that's the other effect of it, is that they really, they leave, they take some liquid, I think, because I'm always thirsty. But um, either that or I talk too much or something. But I'm always thirsty when I'm done. But I go home, and what happens is I'm out like a light. But I feel great right now. I'm not tired at all. Do you dream? Do you dream about? I do. About the aliens? Yeah. Or? I, every now and then, but I don't remember my dreams a lot, unless they let me remember them. So. Thank you so much. Um, well, you'll, you'll probably enjoy this tape. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. Was it enjoyable? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Excellent. Excellent. Completely. Totally, completely. A high vibration guy showed up. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Kispat. Yeah, I'm Good, so, I'm glad. I'm so, he, he, he just started speaking about very interesting topics and I was there eating, so I, <laughs> I jumped in back and he thought it's a good point to, to leave. So oh, no! Questions which won't answer. About Chakani history, about Golden Threads, it was amazing at the end. But, you know, he decided to leave. Well, he was probably tired. <laughs> no, no, it was you. I think he was. Yeah, I think he's probably think more he was, concerned about uh, me. Just yeah, taking, making sure you you're in good shape. Okay. Well, he accomplished his goal in the first five or ten minutes. Oh yeah, that was. He, he brought a message. Yeah. Which was probably like a five or ten minute miniature lecture. And then he just took questions for the rest of the time. Wow. So. Was the lecture good? I'll have to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. It was about logic over emotionality. That sounds you like use, something that they would talk about. Using logic to It's like a Volcom le lecture. Mm-hmm. Huh? It's like a Volcom le lecture. Yeah. Did it, was it good? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah really yeah. good. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Well, you'll see it when you watch it. Uh-huh. Usually... Did it? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 that toxic loser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did not put it on his forehead. That was good. <laughs> no, he did not put it on his forehead, so... No loser.